following on my last video, video 110, where I honed my skills in making moldings, you remember I suffered with three things. The first is that the cutting blades I had were really not thin enough, the files were too large, and the biggest problem I had was I really couldn't see what I was doing. Um, so I was going to order um, some microscope cameras, and that's a whole new bag and a whole new set of money. And then suddenly I said, well, wait a minute, I have what I need right here. I have an old iPhone camera, I have an old, a new iPhone, and of course I have my iPad Pro. And then I remembered I even have an old iPad Pro, all that have pretty good cameras on them. I have my iPhone, which I can move around anywhere I want and virtually fit it anywhere. And that's hooked up by a cable to an old monitor that I have for my security system at home. And it really gives me perfect vision. And of course, I can zoom in and really get to look at the work in great detail. So it has changed my life absolutely. So the oversized tools that I have, although still too big, I can find a way to skirt around the problem by making very small cuts. The last part um, is I was using the turbo carver to come in and clean up and reshape the rounded surfaces. And that didn't go too well. In some cases, I actually cut other parts. Again, a lot of handshake. And then I said, well, why don't I just turn the mill back the correct way and use the same bits in a Jacob's chuck and, and then do the horizontal surfaces. So that's what I've done. And I have to tell you, I have total control about cutting the molding pieces out of the saw blades now. So I'm going to take you through the process using my old iPad Pro as well as the monitor in the background. Here we can see the piece is loaded in the middle. This is how I originally started doing it. The only difference is I can actually see what I'm doing. And in this case, I cut straight down on one side um, to get to the bottom of the first curve. And then I go backwards to try and put that little side curve in. Uh, I can't tell you the I can't explain enough the control that this is giving me, uh, but I can slowly come down and get to the exact depth that I'm trying to, to achieve. Um, and although it's not 100% perfect, the, the lesson I'm learning as I go along is really to take less, and at a later point in time, if I want to take some more, I can come back. And of course, the standard problem we all have when working at scale is that we end up making these pieces over scale. And you can see on the left side, I've already gone past uh, the line that is supposed to be the width. In fact, this piece um, was made twice because you're going to see later on in the video, I've actually done another attempt to try and keep within the two side lines which define the scale. Um, and again, on the, I'm using the wheel to take away the bulk of the stock because the diamond wheels uh, are not designed um, to take away a lot of, um, of metal. They're really just to uh, hone and put in very gentle cuts on the side. So this is really just trying to get to the major pieces um, removed from the blade. Remember, this is my first attempt um, using the uh, macro lenses, and I had a lot of trouble um, trying to line up the turbo carver. I ended up having to push it too far into the hole. And in fact, if I had left the piece alone right now, I would have gotten as close to a perfect shape as I can. Now I'm putting in the curved surfaces, but if you look on the far right hand corner, you'll see I've already screwed it up. I've cut off the top right edge, which is not a problem because I can just sand that off later on. 
Now I'm going to take the turbo cover and try and put the inside flat edge and that really did not work out very well. Again, too much shake. So that's when I had my brainwave and uh, uh, remounted the mill, uh, put the diamond bit in it and started to use it uh, to create these flat surfaces. So this is the second attempt. First attempt is on the left. This is the second attempt. In fact, this is the fifth attempt, if I'm to be correct. The others were done without the aid of the magnifying process. And just look at the control that we have. Um, that little brush became very important. I had to clean it constantly um, because the, ed the pieces that would be sanded off kept getting in the way and I couldn't see the clean line. Um, but I'll just leave it alone and you'll see the, the control um, by cutting, making cuts in this manner. To do that inside curve was still almost impossible to do it um, with the mill set up in this way. So I did go back with the turbo cover and round it off. Um, but that's where those small files which I'll eventually get will allow me to do that by hand and thereby having no risk um, of damaging the piece or making it too big. So I hope you found this interesting. Um, the learning process continues and I'm happy to continue to share my experiences as I go along. So keep modeling and we'll see you next video.